So that's why we initiated our book, Riyadh al-Salihin, to learn or to take that path of knowing how to establish their good acts, how to be from those who will be successful and from those who will be pleased on the day of judgment. So the first and from the action as well, when we look at an, a good action, it is looked at from the sense of it is niya or intention. And that's from the action as well that which benefits is that which is intended for Allah only. So that's why we initiate, initiated with uh, a niya uh, uh, or intention. And then the Sheikh spoke about a toba. And we said a toba is for now, if you know this, that you need to do good deeds and you need to intend by the doing this good deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This action needs preservation. You need to take care of it. You need to ensure that this act is intact. You need to ensure that this act, nothing comes on it that eradicates it or nullifies it or wipes it away. And that is the aspect of the Tawbah. And the aspect of the Tawbah retains two things. First thing, due to the state of a person, due to our shortcomings, due to the naqs of a human being, that we always depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want to preserve that action, if you want to preserve that good deed, then you need to always تَلْتَجِي إِلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ wa ta'ala تَعُودُ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَسْتَعِينَ بِاللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ wa ta'ala That you go back to Allah, you seek assistance through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By going back to Him and making forgiveness, asking forgiveness, returning to Him, Returning to his ta'a and his obedience. And the second aspect is ensuring that you do that which repels that enemy that comes to harm you. You fortify, you fortify, you fortress. You strengthen yourself so that nothing comes there to attack this good deeds of your action. And that is the nutshell what we covered in the aspect of a Tawbah. And Alhamdulillah we finished the chapter of a Tawbah. And before the, we started last week, before we initiate on the second or the third chapter, we started last week a, a little gift for you. And this gift runs around bringing into your sense and the importance of staying away from sins. And also understanding the magnitude of this action that you're on, that disobedience. And also a means that it strengthen you and it strengthen that aspect of you that tries to repel this sin or tries to resist this sin. And in doing that, we spoke about, we, we said we go through the, the matters that Sheikh uh, Ibn Qayyim al jawziya he mentioned in his book, Uddat al-Sabirin. And now we've got to the fourth aspect. The first aspect being that a person who really comprehends and understands the greatness, ta'zim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then yastahi min an He is shy of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you realize the magnitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
That he is the one who gives you every moment. He is the one who enables you to live. He is the one who created you, sustains you. He is the one who brings day and night forth. He is the one who gives you your, your, your quwa, your strength. Then you become shy in sinning and in disobeying him. And we said the second aspect is the aspect of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if your heart and yourself as a believer declare that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as they say, the one who loves does not disobey the, the one who he loves. So it is negates. If you say you love Allah, but you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is the negation, your action negates that which you profess to have in your heart. And the second aspect, we said, the ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ihsanihi alayh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in every moment of, of, of yours, He is giving you blessing, He is giving you strength, He is giving you health, He is giving you wealth, He is giving you place you live, He is giving you shelter. And this is from min ihsanihi, min ihsanihi. This is from part of that ni'mah, that blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers you with. So if you really realize that ni'mah of Allah, tastahiyya and ta'asih, you become shy that you disobey him. And the fourth aspect that we, would, that we did not cover, and we will cover, is for you to realize, okay, before going on to that sinning and disobeying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wrath and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is two aspects you need to keep in mind. The anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first of all, the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who al qadir. So if Allah is angry upon you, he can do whatever he wants, it's not like a human being. And at the same time, when the ghadab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you have earned it through your action, then know that that is your destruction. There's none who will save you, nor would you be, to say, be able to save yourself, nor would others be able to save you, save you from that. So the first thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَمَّا أَسَفُونَ انْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when they angered us, we took revenge of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so this is أَقَلِّ الْقَلِيلِ أَنْ تَخْشَى that you become fearful of the wrath and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that could also be, this is a means by which you, it repels you and it stops you from making sure you, from you sinning. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَحْلِلْ عَلَيْهِ غَضَبِ فَقَدْ هَوَى For the one who have earned through his actions, the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then as I said, his distract is gone. Nor would he be able to save himself from that, nor would anyone else be able to save him. So this is the thing that we, me and you, we need to think before of thinking of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're not, la تتقوى على ذلك. If you're not able to repel the ghadab and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're not able to save yourself, then think twice before you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Shaykh, Shaykh, Shaykh says, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, Al-Khamis, Mashhad al-Fawat, wa huwa ma yafutuhu bil-ma'asiyah min khayri dunya wal akhira. وما يحدث له بها من كل اسم مذموم عقلا وشرعا وعرفا وتزول عنه من الاسماء الممدوحه شرعا وعقلا وعرفا so now this matter when you choose to you are choose to uh, do this sin these things that you lose 
as we know in the day of judgment, for those who do not do good, what do they lose what? They lose Dar al Naim. They lose Jannah. So once you embark on a sin, or consistent on the sin of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you know that you're losing something of a good. You're losing elevation. And you also, as he says, that you lose the good of this world in the hereafter. Don't ever think this is mean any uh, shaytan. This is from the tricks of the shaytan. Don't ever think that you do a sin and tahna qalbak or qalbuk. That your heart will find tranquility and peace by you being in sin. You will see the author of it and the ramification of it in this world and the hereafter. And also that good name. That respect, that honor that is earned for you, that you earn it through good deed in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the sight of people, is uplifted from you once you embark on this scene that is a means to your destruction. And he says, وَيَكْفِي فِي الْهَادَ الْمَشْهَدِ مشهد فوات الإيمان الذي أدنى مثقال ذرة منه خير من الدنيا وما فيها أضعافا مضاعفة فكيف يبيعه بشهوة تذهب لذتها وتبقى سوء معيشتها تذهب الشهوة وتبقى الشقوة So now what me and you need to understand is that he says it is sufficient that a person through embarking on this scene that he loses the aspect of Iman because as we said the points we mentioned man istaqarra fihi imanun a person who has complete Iman he who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And the person وَمَنْ عَرَفَ قَدْرَهُ And the one who knows his his uh, status then يعني that is the قدر الإيمان الذي فيه So that is the aspect of the Iman that is in within it. So if he يعني that يعني الخوف أن يخفي أن يرضي العبد it is enough enough for a slave to turn from sin that fear that he has that he may lose that aspect of iman and for what what reason does he lose for Allah سبحانه وتعالى out of his his نعمة upon the mankind that he did not make in أي لا لذة في الدنيا باقية وإنما هي لذة تبقى للثواني that Allah سبحانه وتعالى did not make any enjoyment in this world enjoyment that ever lasts but is the enjoyment of moment that comes and goes so how would you think about selling an iman selling eternity selling the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pleasement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but that moment of seconds of pleasure, that it is pleasure goes, walakin, shakawatiha, oh it is, it is nadam, it is great greatness, is consistent, and it will not go away. As he says, the Sheikh mentions, وَقَدْ صَحَّ عَنِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَنَّهُ قَالْ لَا يَزْنِ الزَّانِي حِينَ يَزْنِي وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith of Sahih that has been reported in Bukhari that he says that a person will not commit a fornication where, while he is in the state of Iman. That he is in state of Iman, in complete state of Iman. And Iman is that which is conformed in the heart, uttered by the tongue and affirmed through the actions. 
So it's not part of the completeness of the Iman of a person. He is not in the complete state of Iman uh, when he commits that act of ma'asi, that act of, of, of disobedience. So this act itself, it takes that aspect of Iman from that person. And he says, قَالَ بَعْضُ الصَّحَابَةِ يُنزَعُ مِنْهُ الْإِيمَانُ حَتَّى يَبْقَى عَلَى رَأْسِهِ مِثْلَ مِثْلَ الظُّلَّةِ فَإِنْ تَابَ رَجَعَ إِلَيْهِ وَقَالَ بَعْضُ التَّابِعِينَ يُنزَعُ عَنْهُ الْإِيمَانُ كَمَا يُنزَعُ عَنْهُ الْقَمِيصُ فَإِنْ تَابَ فَلَابِسَهُ وَلِهَذَا رَأَى النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الَّذِي رَوَاهُ الْبُخَارِيُّ فِي صَحِيحِهِ الزُّنَاةُ فِي التَّنُّورِ عُرَاةً عُرَاةً لِأَنَّهُمْ تَعَرَّوْا مِنْ لِبَاسِ الْإِيمَانِ وَعَادَ تَنُورُ الشَّهْوَةِ الَّذِي كَانُوا كَانَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ تَنُورًا ظَاهِرًا يُحْمَى عَلَيْهِ فِي النَّارِ So he says that, that companions have said a person when he commits a sin then his iman or his iman then iman is the thing that gives you existence the thing that gives you qima the thing that makes you a human being the things that makes you the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that aspect of iman is raised from that person and held on top of his head and if he comes back from that sin and repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is returned to him and he said and the companions also at Tabin said that is like a clothes where a person if he commits a sin that clothes is taken is unclosed and when he repents that clothes is put back onto, onto him and that's why for the ones who commit fornication as has come in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, they are put in like uh, things that the, 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 uh, the bread is baked in, in, in naked, they will be naked because of that aspect of that sin that they used to commit. So this is uh, the fourth aspect we said, is the fourth aspect, uh, the, uh, the, the fifth aspect is antakhsha, that you're fearful that uh, the khair tafutak bihada that the goodness uh, you are deprived of goodness by committing this sin that only brings you enjoyment of a moment but a nadam or everlasting uh, regret so from ta'liqat uh, it has come from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Thawban radiallahu anhu anil nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anahu qal la'a'lamanna aqwaman min ummati ya'tuna yawm al-qiyamati bi hasanatin amthalu jibali tahama bayda baydan fayaj'aluha allahu subhanahu wa ta'ala haba'an manthura qala Thawban ya rasulallah shifum lana jallihim lana ألا نكون منهم ونحن لا نعلم قال أما إنهم إخوانكم ومن جلدتكم ويأخذون من الليل كما تأخذون ولكنهم أقوام إذا خلوا بمحارم الله انتهكوها So it has come from the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet said I know from my people people will come A group of people will come They will come on the day of judgment with mountains of good deeds But that good deed it will be It will it will go without يعني, it will be as though it's not there why so the, the companions told that asked him uh, asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hadha min nushhim li anfusihim this is how they were eager to to comply to the order of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do the good so they asked all the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explain to us who are these people what are their characteristics he said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they are your brothers they are from you and ya'khudhuna min al-layl kama ta'khudhun they and they take portion from the night as you take portion from the night you know they do good deeds they pray during the night however they are whenever they are yani they by themselves they they embark or they do that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited from uh, from the sins so and yaqtada radiyallahu anhu he says من استطاع منكم أن لا يبطل عملا صالحا عمله بعمل سيء فليعمل فليعمل فإن الخير ينسخ الشر وإن الشر ينسخ الخير. So he says Qatada from whoever he is able that a person whenever you do good deeds, okay, you do bad deeds, you do good deeds after it because the good deeds 
as the Prophet ﷺ has informed us in the hadith, that the good deeds wipes the bad deed. You follow in the... Uh, so now we go to number six, al-sadis. مشهد القهر والظفر فإن القهر الشهوة والظفر بالشيطان له حلاوة ومسرة وفرحة عند من ذاق ذلك أعظم من الظفر بعدوك من الآدميين وأحلى موقعا وأتم فرحة وأما عاقبته فأحمد عاقبة وهو كعاقبة شرب الدواء النافع الذي أزال داء الجسد وأعداء وأعاده إلى صحته واعتداله. So he says now one of the things that you need to think as well, you need to feel as well, you need to have within you is the aspect that whenever you overcome this sin, whenever you're not tempted, whenever you hold yourself back from this sin, that feeling is a feeling of victory. He says it is more stronger than the feeling that you have when you become victorious upon a person, for example, a, a, you fight uh, someone, an army fights an army, and, and then they, when they win, there's a great joy. Or when you enter into something, you win uh, others. So he says it is more than that for the one who has the feeling of it. And also, this is one thing, yani that, that feeling of victorious that you have overcome, okay, that feeling comes with shukri Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and tashkur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alladhi يعني أمكنك من ذلك the one who has enabled you thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى also that feeling that victory has good ending from Allah سبحانه وتعالى the ثواب that he has prepared for the ones who have retained their hearts and they have maintained within the boundary of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and also he says as this is يعني the the feeling of victorious over the shaytan which uh, allows you, and that is a great feeling that you should have within yourself. Okay, we move on to Al Amr Stabia from the uh, seventh. Point. الفوز بالعوض من الله سبحانه وتعالى. الله سبحانه وتعالى لم يأمر العبد بالطاعة وله لا وله ذلك بدون عوض. الله سبحانه وتعالى did not order his creation just for obedience only, but he gave him a reward. But if he would have ordered you to worship him. Without any, any, any reward, he could have done it because he, he created you. He, because he created you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his rahmah, out of his mercy, and to strengthen you, he has made the iwad for you. He has made al-jannah. Haste towards the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For that paradise. So... One of the things as well, a person, before you sin. Now we're not talking about that a person is about to sin, he thinks about this thing. But this is the things that he, a person needs to lament in himself and cement in himself and put it engraved in himself before that. Anta limada tamtanya min al maasi. Why do you stay away from sins? Because you fear Allah, you know the greatness of Allah, you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You fear the, the, the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for you. So these are cemented within you. So whenever that shaitan comes, whichever way he comes, tries to for you to take his path to make him sin, that you remember that. If I take this path, that iwad, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised me, is, will be taken away. And that Allah, as Allah says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَنُحِيَّنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ 
أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون. الله سبحانه وتعالى says for the one who does good from man and woman and in their faith they believe we will show them that they live حياتاً طيبة a beautiful life a content life a meaningful life a life that lives with joy a life that enjoys every moment of it you might say a person enjoys every moment of it yes a believer really who, who lives who understands the name of Allah he will enjoy every moment of it لا يكون إلا إن he will not be in every moment in any moment but he is in the moment of a ni'ma from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he is in the best in a content state as Allah says وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى for the one who fears the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, 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 and hold his, himself his, from his lust he has hold his soul from uh, the lust that, uh, of the nafs then فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى for him where is his abode where is his place and then he is Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised him a paradise so this is the iwad this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put for you. So if you put this, you see this, this part that Allah has promised you, and you put that few moments of lust that you might attain, or that pleasure that you might attain, it does not, it contradicts, it does not, this is everlasting, this is a moment. And this everlasting with tahmid, I mean, this is ni'mah that you'll be in, and you become thankful as well. When you're in it, you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tahmid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at this one is a last, that last is very short. But Ya'aqibuhu ish and nadam. And that is gonna last the regret that is gonna last uh, with you. Al Amru Thamin, the eighth aspect that enables uh, that you, we work towards cementing it within our heart and it will benefit us when the shaitan comes to us uh, for us to do sinning. As he says, مشهد المعية وهي نوعان معية عامة ومعية خاصة فالعمد الطلع الرب تعالى عليه وكونه بعينه لا تخفى عليه حاله وقد تقدم والمقصود هنا المعية الخاصة في قوله إن الله مع الصابرين وقوله إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون وقوله وإن, وإن الله لمع المحسنين فهذه المعية الخاصة خير له وأنفع في دنياه وآخرته من قضاء وطره ونيل شهوته على التمام من أول العمر إلى آخره فكيف يؤثر عليها لذة, لذة منغصة منكدة في مدة يسيرة من العمر إنما, إنما هي كأحلام نائم أو كظل زائل So he says that you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you. Allah is with the one who believes. And being with him, Allah being with the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, is, he sees everything, he's with every uh, creation. He knows what his creation does. does. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his believer, in specifically, with his aid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the ones who do good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, as he says, إن الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون. الله سبحانه وتعالى is the one from with those who they are fearful of him and good doers. And he aids him. Allah سبحانه supports him and strengthens them and, and and guides them to doing good. So you should fear that you use you lose this معية الخاصة. That Allah be with you, aiding you. That you, might, you lose this through this act that you embark on, this sin. And he says, he says, is, this ma'iyya is better than you if you are able to do this sin or if you are able to do this act that you do from the beginning of your life to the end of it. So this ma'iyya and la yusawihi shay. That this aid from Allah, this being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you and supporting you 
there's nothing that equates to it. So you should, and he mentions, it's like a dream that you have. When you wake up a dream, something that you dream in your dream. When you after wake up, you wake up to reality. Or something, a will, or like a shade that you, it comes and then goes. So it's just like that, this aspect that you're embarking on. So it's tahi. So be, not, don't be fooled. And don't lose this ma'iyya al khasa. Don't lose this aspect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being in your aid, with you, supporting you, guiding you, and taking you out of that uh, darkness into the path of light. Al Amr al Tasi Mashhadu al Mugha Fasati wal Mu'ajala wa huwa an yakhafa an yugasifahu al Ajalu faya khudahu Allahu ala ghirratin فيحال بينه وبين ما يشتهي من لذة الدنيا وبينه وبين ما يشتهي من لذة الآخرة فيا لها من حسرة ما أمرها وما أصعبها أصعبها لكن ما يعرفها إلا من جربها وفي بعض الكتب القديمة يا من لا يأمن على نفسه طرفة عين ولا يتم له سرور يوم الحذر الحذر so he says and now, in the, when, when, when you embark on this scene, you do not embark on something that you are maqdurun alayh, that you are able. As every moment of yours in the control of Allah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You agile your time, because now, you're not here al itlaq You're not here as forever. You have time that Allah has given you. Maybe this time will come to you on that moment, or before that, you, 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 before, uh, after embarking on, on doing, intending to do that action, before you do it, maybe your ajal comes to you. So fear. And that as well, yahulu baynaka wa bayna tawbah. That when you're on it, you do that, and, and you don't have time for the tawbah, and for, for the sinning. Mm. So, what is the default state of a believer is always the state of cautiousness, fear. You are cautious. You don't have the a guarantee or the strength to say, I'm going to embark on something that is min isyan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the acts of disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah could take you before, at that moment, before you, 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 you do that act and you'll be held accountable for it. So if you, and in kind of, la tadmal li nafsi kazalika al if you're not able to guarantee for yourself that action, what gives you that courage? What gives you that strength for you to embark on this sinning? So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember that. That the time, the ajal of Allah could come to you at that moment. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ That when the time comes, they, they will not be allowed, delayed, that time will be not be delayed, or all will not it be uh, brought forth at all. Al-Ashr, the, the tenth meta that will help you cement, strengthen you, uh, the aspect of repelling that sin is Mashadu al-Bala'i wal-Aqibah or Mashadu al-Bala'i wal-Aafiyah فَإِنَّ الْبَلَاءِ فِي الْحَقِيقَةِ لَيْسَ إِلَّا الذُّنُوبِ إِلَّا الذُّنُوبَ وَعَوَاقِبُهَا وَالْعَافِيَةُ الْمُطْلَقَةُ هِيَ الطَّاعَةُ وَعَاقِبُهَا فَأَهْلُ الْبَلَاءِ هُمْ أَهْلُ الْمَعْصِيَةِ وَنُعُقِبَتْ أَبْدَانُهُمْ وَأَهْلُ الْعَافِيَةِ هُمْ أَهْلُ الطَّاعَةِ وَإِنْ مَرِضَتْ أَبْدَانُهُمْ So now The worst of calamity, yani, uh, the worst of, when we think about calamity, we think about losing wealth, losing that which you possess, okay? Or maybe being, you're losing your, your health. But he says, as it is, the worst of, of calamity is the calamity that comes from sin. Think about it. 
as we earlier said, what is the state of that which will distinguish the person the day of judgment is two things. al ta'a which enables you to enter by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala paradise. And al ma'asiya which is a means that uh, makes it from the people of hellfire. So he says, so the worst of bala, the worst of affliction that befalls a person is the affliction of ma'asi, as the noob. And and the worst of the best of end is the best end of a ta'a. Okay? Let's take this an example. A ta'a, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went through so many things. So many things. He was uh, prosecuted. He was uh, treated bad. He got injured. He left his country. And he, Bilal, the same thing. He was uh, punished. But that did not, that wasn't a bala for them. That was a source of elevation for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that elevated him, elevated them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was treated like that, that tied stone on, on, on his tummy, that slept in the state of hunger. He is the best of creation. He is the one that he will call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the day of judgment, make dua, so that the hisab, the, the judgment of mankind to begin. So, as they say, the best of things, a victory is with the ta'a, is with obedience, and the worst of bala, the worst of affliction, is the state of the no. So when you do that sin, know that you do the, the greatest of affliction is coming upon you. If you were lose, to lose to your loved ones, to, for you to lose your, your, your house, your, your wealth, what do they say? A person becomes, maybe you lose your head, yeah? you, you, you become crazy. This is what you need to think, the same thing. That when you embark on a sin, تفقد حياتك, تفقد نفسك. And you lose your soul. You're making your soul يستحق العذاب, يستحق النار. You're enabling it, you're allowing it to take the path to hellfire. So this is the worst of destruction. So in a nutshell, the worstly, the ones who are worstly afflicted on the state of Bala are the ones who are sinning. Sinning and making, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the eleventh aspect is, as he says, that as we, you have the aspect of internal fighting with aspect of you resisting yourself from this sin or the aspect of desiring this sin. So he says, أن يعود باعث الدين ودواعيه مصارعة الهوى ومقاومته على التدريج قليلا قليلا حتى يدرج لذة الظفر فتقوى حينئذ همته فإن من ذاق لذة الشيء قويت همته في تحصيله والاعتدال والاعتياد لممارسة الأعمال الشاقة يزيد القوي So now he says now to overcome this lust that you have, or this desire that drags you towards sinning, you need to ensure the aspect of within you to strengthen your iman and to strengthen you fighting this. How do you do it? You do it slowly. Okay? 
For example, you do an act. You, you do good deeds. Because good deeds is strengthening you, is part of the strengthening you. You, take it, you carry it on slowly. For example, you, let's say a person who wants to strengthen that aspect of his iman. When his iman is strengthened, the aspect of the, the sinning dies. Okay? Let's say we take aspect of fasting. You don't come and fast, say, I'm going to khalas, I'm going to fast, and straight away, in one day you start fasting, and I want to fast every second day. But take it slowly. Let's say fast one day, or two days, or three days in a month. Why? Because that slow trans uh, transition strengthens that aspect of you to repel it, because it enables you to feel the sweetness of that act you're doing. So when so you feel that sweetness of fasting, sweetness of praying, sweetness of giving for the sake of Allah, then you do, don't want to come back from it. When your qalb is attached to that sweetness of, of doing good, then it goes far away from sinning. It goes far away from being attached to that desire or, or answering that call of desire. So he says, gradually take that aspect which is strengthening you. Okay, like when you eat grapes, you take slowly, one by one. Now when you're taking that grape, you, you, you test it. You have the test of it. The same the ta'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have that ta'a, that obedience of Allah, you take it gradually. And you feel that test. And so that test becomes lamented and cemented within you that you do not want it to leave your heart. And so this becomes itself, it forms a fortress wherein whenever you, your, 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 your soul tells you to do that which is disobedient, you straight away, you, 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 your body becomes in a shock. Why? Because it is alert of the, the na'im of iman and the ta'a of Allah the sweetness of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that it becomes, you know, as someone uh, electrocuted, you feel that, that sense of resistance. But a person who does not have that sweetness, then it becomes easy. It's too insane, it becomes normal. Because he doesn't have that sense of ta'a of Allah, which within it, engraves in it the Iman and also Azamatillah subhanahu wa ta'ala the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says Woman Tarakal Mujahada Bil Kulia Dawha fihi al Ba'ithu Din Wakia fi Wakawiya fihi Ba'ithu Shahwa Wamata Awada Nafsahu Muhalafa Tal Hawa uh, this aspect of, of being okay no now is not and we're not saying we shouldn't understand saying you know brother or sister leave the scene call us leave the scene okay, leave the scene but when you also leave the scene you have to strengthen yourself there's the aspect of mujahada, the striving. Okay? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a ta'a? Why did Allah tell us to pray, to fast, to give? What, what, what is the means behind it? Mathal, a zakat to tahir. Prayer strengthens you, it reminds you of Allah. Why? Because that aspect strengthens you. Nucleus, which is your, 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 your heart, it strengthens it. It ensures that it's revolved around realization of the facts and the realization of the reality. And so it becomes strong. But when you leave that mujahada, when you feel that it's not a problem, I'm not going to fall into the scene, you know, I'm not going to do it, I don't need. You know, uh, I just need to stay away from it. So I don't need to do good deeds. This is contrary. 
This is also from the cave of the shaitan. Because is you like going into ma'araka, you're going to a battlefield, and say, I don't need guns. I can go with like this, you know, walk in the battlefield. What do you say if you see a person walking in, in the middle of midst of a battlefield without anything, without no gun, without protection, nothing, nothing? You say, this person is crazy. This is your state and our state. So if you say that you're just like this, without doing good, without striving, without working hard, without doing the good deeds, without increasing good deeds, and fortifying yourself that you're able to overcome your sins, you're able to overcome your shahawat, your desires, you're just fooling yourself. And that is from the uh, tricks of the shaytan. And <clears throat> the twelfth عشر, element of uh, a fact, meta, كَفُّ الْبَاطِلِ عَنْ حَدِيثِ النَّفْسِ وَإِذَا مَرَّتْ بِهِ الْخَوَاطِرُ نَفَاهَا وَلَا يُؤْوِيهَا وَيُسَاكِنُهَا فَإِنَّهَا تَصِيرُ مُنَا وهي رؤوس أموال المفاليس ومتى ساكن الخواطر صارت أماني ثم تقوى فتصير هموما ثم تقوى فتصير إرادة ثم تقوى فتصير عزما So he says to you okay? This goes back to the aspect of alertness A believer is always alert He says to you that if anything, anything comes to you, any sense of sin, straight away fight it. Don't allow it to re stay. Don't give it, don't open your door and say, come in. Close the door straight away. As the Prophet says, when you see with your eyes, okay, when you see something, what do you do? Do you continue to look at it? You turn away from it, yes? This is the closing. This is when anything comes to your mind, straight away. Ista'iz billah. Seek assistance from Allah. Stay away. Don't give it a thaniya of his time. Why? Because once he enters the house, once it occupies and enters into your house, and that's why we say about looking. You look at the sister, or you look, you know, and that looking becomes. It starts formulating in your mind. It starts becoming having a feature. It starts becoming something that occupies you. It starts becoming worry. And then it starts becoming irada. And it forces you now. Now you don't have, you go to the state where it demands. It demands you to do something. So what will prevail that for you to get to that state? Is it ajat fil awwal? When it comes at the first part, when it knocks your door, you close your door. You don't open it. La tulqilaha bala. You don't give it any concern. Because, as they say, what do they say? Prevention is better than cure. This is part of your prevention. For you to try to to alid, for someone, let's say, a person who's, as they say, who tries a drug, okay, maybe he's able, and he aqwa, his strength is strong at the beginning to leave it. But when he's hooked onto it, khalas, he's gone. It becomes dist destructive. It has built itself Engraves itself in himself, person. So it becomes hard to treat it. The same thing with the sins as well. And number 13, we just swift, swiftly going through it. Qatul al alaiq wal asbab alati tad'u. التي تدعوه إلى موافقة الهوى 
وليس المراد أن لا يكون له هوى بل يصرف هواه إلى ما ينفعه ويستعمله في تنفيذ مراد الرب تعالى فإن ذلك يدفع عنه شر استعماله في معاصيه فإن كل شيء من الإنسان يستعمله لله فإن الله يقيه شر استعماله لنفسه وللشيطان وما لا يستعمله لله استعماله لنفسه وهواه ولا بد فالعلم إن لم يكن لله كان للنفس والهوى والعمل إن لم يكن لله كان للرياء والنفاق والمال إن لم يكن لله أنفق في طاعة الشيطان والهوى وجاه إن لم يستعمل لله استعمل لصا... استعمله صاحبه في هواه وحظوظه والقوة إن لم... والقوة إن لم يستعملها في أمر الله استعمله استعملته في معص... استعملته في معصيته فمن عود نفسه العمل لله لم يكن عليه أشق من العمل لغيره ومن عود نفسه العمل لهواه وحظه لم يكن عليه أشق من الإخلاص والعمل لله وهذا في جميع أبواب الأعمال فليس شيء أشق على المنفق لله من الإنفاق لغيره وكذا بالعكس Now is for you to cut every door except the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala your desires, your strength, your wealth, your thinking, you use it for Allah only. Because if you don't use it for Allah, if you don't use your youth for Allah, fi ta'ati rahman in the obedience of Allah, in praying, in learning the Quran, in doing good, what are you going to use it for? You're going to use it for your lust, for your desire, for the path of, of the shaitan. There's no the third aspect. Imma hadha wa imma hadha. This one or this one? As he mentions, your wealth, your strength. This one, if you don't use it for the sake of Allah, for the purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're going to use it for the opposite. So what do you do? Every aspect of yours. Tasrifuhu lillah. Tajal wa tas'allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. كل لحظاتك وحياتك أن يكون لله سبحانه وتعالى. So you make every moment for the sake of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. What? تنال أمران أو أمرين. You you earn two things. The first aspect سلامة نفسك. You are saved. You are intact. You benefited yourself in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the mardatihi and the na'im that comes with it. Okay? So know that. Now a person, inshallah, we finish this one on this. The guy did. هذا خلص آخر شيء يعني نعلق والتعليقات يسيرة. So now when we say that we need to leave sins, okay? Just like you might say, okay, I leave sin. يعني as a شباب or as a youth, I have my طاقة. What do I do with it? Or as a rich person, if you tell me, you know, to not go play gambling, let's say, what do I do with my wealth? تصرفه في الله. You do that which Allah is pleased with. You youth, you spend it in the path of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. You what? As a youth, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said they are from the seven people that will be under the shade of of, 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 of the shade of Allah, the day of judgment where there is no shade. What is it? Is a youth that has grown in the ta'a of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. You aim for that. You aim to learn your deen. You aim learn aim to teach. As I explained in the khutbah, that it is you, the one, the youth, that is going to explain the deen, that is going to carry the banner of the deen, that is going to carry the identity of the deen, that is going to explain the deen, that is going to teach the deen, that is going to sacrifice for the deen. So if you don't realize and you don't use it, because it's all this what needs, it needs your time, it needs your effort, it needs your wealth, 
So this is where you spend it. And if you do that, you are saved. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that saves you through sinning and through that which uh, distracts you or acts something that would uh, save you from the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah we will continue uh, from where we stopped until we finish it next week. Barakallah feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.